Hi, I'm Chrissy, and welcome to my chat physics talk about the visualizer. I've been teaching in Scotland since 2004. I teach physics and I teach science for first and second years as well. In this talk, I'll tell you about my route to using one in the classroom. I'll talk you through how I use it for live modeling and how it's useful for demonstrations. And then I'll bring my conclusions. So I've been teaching at my current school for six years. When I got there, my colleague had a visualizer, the first time I'd seen one, and she was very proud of it. I tried using it at the time. I could see how it could be valuable, but it wasn't something that I brought into my classroom teaching at that point. Fast forward to this year, we've adapted how we've been teaching. The department that I work in got visualizers for every classroom and I've spent more time getting to know them. Teaching is different this year, as we all know. I have my pupils in their seats a lot more often. There are less experiments. And of course, now I've been doing remote teaching. So it's all been through a screen. And through all of this, the visualizer has been absolutely useful. So let's move on to how I do live modelling in the classroom. At the moment, my fourth years are working on the properties of matter topic in the National Five. So since we've been doing remote learning, I've been doing questions with them through their sessions. Here's an example where they have to choose a multiple choice question, which is the best setup for an experiment. So it's really handy for me to be able to show this to the class and then through the chat, on Microsoft Teams, I could get them to put in their suggestions of how they would start this kind of question. I decided to start with student five here. We had a look at it and then I asked why that would not be the most accurate value for specific capacity. And they were very quick to notice that the thermometer was not within the, the system, so you wouldn't get a good value. Then we could move on to the others and we could bring that down as well and then I could ask them to put their answers into the the chat for what they would have put as their answer so it's just a very quick way for me to get a full class um, overview of how they were doing and just check that they were understanding that from there I moved on to a longer question and again I only had to have this one copy of it. I didn't have to have a copy for all of them. They didn't have to have other windows open while they were on the chat with me, as they would if they were using the, per the past papers electronically. And we could go through the, the diagram here. They could ask me for help if there's anything they weren't sure about. So we looked at the numbers. And then we could start to do this. And also I could just write straight on to the piece of paper here. Okay, so I could put down the formula for them. And then we could start to find out and check they understood where the numbers were coming from. I could ask for suggestions in the chat for this, if it was in the classroom, then they could put their hands up, they could use show me boards, anything that would help me to understand where they're coming from. I could annotate it just to help them get the values. And through that, I could do the calculation live. I could put the numbers into it. Okay, I could be saying there'd be one mark for that. I could show them you could get one mark for that one. And then we could get the final value. with its units and get the full three marks for that one. You could also put the paper up where you'd already done the calculation and perhaps just have it covered and bring it down a line at a time. Okay. So far, so graphics tablet. I know a lot of people like to use those as well. I know that people can have um, actual tablets where they can have a PDF open and they can write in those. Those are all very, very useful ways 
that can be used in the classroom as well. The one reason why I like the visualizer is because I prefer my writing on paper. I know I could get used to how to use a tablet, but um, I just find it more natural to write on paper. And it just means that I've got exactly the same as the class have, which makes it very useful for that. So let's move on to another thing that I can use for the live modeling, which I also think is very useful with the visualizer. And that is for graphs. I do have ways to put graph paper up on a Parisian board, but it doesn't always have the same divisions. It's not always got the same scales for that. And we know that junior classes can struggle to do graphs. We've all had our lessons. We're trying to make an entire class do a line graph and it can be quite hard work. But if I have my visualizer, I have the same kind of paper as they have. We can look at the results that we're using and we can decide together what scales we are going to use. Because everyone's got the same paper, they should all be able to count. So I can talk through them. I can say, right, let's do the X axis. We can draw it on. I can remind them to add their units, remind them to add their labels. And we can look at the highest value in their table, decide how many boxes we're going across, and then put the numbers in for that. As they're doing it on at their desk, they can be checking up on the board and making sure that their graph looks like mine. And what I tend to find is that gives them a lot of confidence. And it means that I have found they are quicker to get their graphs done. And the next time we do graphs, they do have more confidence in starting to use the methods for themselves in choosing scales and remembering to put in their labels and their their units. Okay, so let's move on to classroom demonstrations. I enjoy doing experiments with my classes. It's one reason why I teach physics, but we all know that as we move up through the school, there's more content to get through and there's less time for actually getting pupils doing their own experiments. We also find that the amount of equipment that schools tend to have means there may only be one set for a class once you get up to, to the higher levels. So I found over this year it's been useful to have my visualiser for using for experiments from a higher class. One of the ones that I did a few weeks ago was when we were doing waves. When we've done interference, we've moved on to diffraction. Again, because I didn't really want the class moving around the classroom, then it was much easier for me to set up the equipment at the front on my demonstration desk and then use the visualizer to show what was happening up on the screen. It means they're not all crowded around my desk trying to look at the spectra and it means that I can point them out on the board as well. Clearly, at the moment, I am remote teaching, meaning I don't have my classroom to work in, so I have had to set it up at home. Okay, so here I have my ray box set up with a single slit at the front, and I have put a diffraction grating in front. And I can be pointing out to the class where the spectra have formed. I could be looking at what order the colours have come in and we could be comparing that with what we would found from a prism when you put white light through that instead. I could pick up my diffraction grating and show them. Okay, this one's 300 lines per millimetre so it's always a good experiment to get them to change that to calculate the grating spacing. So that's probably what I would have moved on to next. And it just means it's very clear. I could take a picture of that if I wanted and post it onto the class teams and then they have a note and a picture of the experiment they've done. And it means I get a chance to hear them all. I do like them sitting in their seats all facing forward because it just is a very controlled atmosphere at that point. And it means that you get to see all the students, see which ones are, are struggling with this and you can just correct any misconceptions while you are actually teaching. It's the one other great thing about the visualizer is I don't have my back to them. I'm not writing on the board. I can be facing them as I write, as I work, as I set up the experiment.
Right, let's move on to everyone's favourite topic, the electricity topic. We all know how much fun it is to have a whole class working with the circuits kit. So I would definitely recommend that you use the visualiser and you do a lot of these as a demonstration. We know that the connections can be a bit iffy at times and we've all had lessons where you are just spending your time going around between the groups. And a lot of the time you're telling them they have got the circuit correct. It's just, it's not working. And that's really quite disappointing. So I like to draw the circuit first so we can talk about the diagram, talk about the symbols. I do this if I'm doing it as a class and they are actually doing their own kit, then I like to get them to draw the circuit on their desk. It does avoid the spaghetti that we quite often get when they try and put all the components and the wires within the smallest possible space. So I can be modelling the fact that you should be spreading out your equipment so that you can see what's happening. Then I can bring up my battery. I can bring up my bulb and add them into my circuit in the same places as they are in the diagram. And then I can add the wires. And there we have our simple circuit. Then if they are building their own ones, they can look at your model on the desk and see that you have your wires spread out and you have your bulb lit. You could add in extras, obviously. You could add in your ammeters, show them how they're added to the circuit. You could put voltmeters in there as well. And I just think it's such a clear way. Again, it's, it's live modeling. It's showing them how the circuit gets set up and they've got an example up on the board for them to look at as they do their own work. Okay, so on to my final demonstration. I don't just teach physics, I teach biology and chemistry to the first and second years. And I have found this year I've been doing a lot more class demonstrations rather than experiments with them. I have found that very useful, particularly some of the chemistry experiments. The one I'm thinking of is the reaction of sodium thiosulfate with hydrochloric acid. It's not one I've ever particularly enjoyed doing with the classes, especially when the temperature gets increased. So this year I did it as a class demo. We had our cross on the piece of paper under the beaker and we could add in the chemicals. Each group had their own stop clocks so they could take their own set of results, get a graph from there and I just felt it ran a lot more smoothly and we knew that everybody got a good set of results. I'm limited at home here with my chemicals, obviously. So we're going to go for the good old fashioned vinegar and bicarbonate soda for this wee bit. So I can just add that into my beaker. You could measure it out if you're in the classroom. You could get the pupils to help with measuring. They could read temperatures, although that is quite tricky to do with the visualizer just to get it lined up, but it is doable if we had to. Then I'll add the bicarbonate of soda. Now, every pupil would see the reaction and they'd be able to hear it as well, whether they were in the classroom watching this or whether they were listening to it over the visualiser. The good thing again here is I've got my paper underneath, so I can be asking the class for what they've noticed and I could annotate it as I went. We could have fizzing, we could have bubbles. And I could be introducing the word effervescence. Okay, and through this, you could put up the information that you want the class to have in their jotters by the end of the lesson. And you're sure that every experimental group will get the results they get because it's all controlled by you. And I just think class demos are the way to go for a lot of this. Okay, so in conclusion, visualizers are relatively cheap, 
They are a good way for you to live model examples and to offer feedback while writing on paper because pupils could come and put their page under the visualizer and show other people and other pupils the work that they've been doing. They're effective in whole class demonstration and they're useful if you're teaching in a non-science classroom as well as a science classroom and also for remote learning. Thank you for listening.